Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ginge and Pedro Show. I'm, of course, your host, Mr. Ginge Gingerton. Alongside me is nobody yet, but we will have Pedro Ang hopefully popping in here soon. We're on the street. He was very sweaty, and uh, he didn't reveal why. I have some thoughts, but um, we'll keep that for another day, I suppose. But um, in the meantime, we do have a, a, a interesting guest here, a, a comic book a sort of combination, a writer, artist. Um, he's been popping by the chat. We tried to have him on a couple weeks ago, but I had some technical difficulties. So he was kind enough to uh, lend us his time again here. And uh, let me go ahead and get my thing ready here. If everybody would please give a round of applause to Mr. Edwin. Hello. I can hey. join us, Edwin. Yeah, thanks for having me. Just uh, let me correct you real quick for a second. I, I am just a writer. Uh, the only art that I do is a stick figure. So if anybody is interested, you can hit me up for that. Okay, my bad. Hey, yeah. it, I feel you. That's that's about as far as I can take it myself. That was my yeah. wanted to start as an artist and did, mm -hmm. or but not in any real way. I stopped drawing like the summer between fourth and fifth grade. I just stopped drawing, started again, and then uh, like that. You know, first day back at school, instead of doing my work, the moment we got released, I just flipped my paper over and tried to draw. Felt like I lost it, and was like, I didn't draw again until I was like nineteen. I mean, I. I do it throughout high school, but it, by the end of uh, my senior year, it was clear that, that an artist's life wasn't for me, so I uh, had to uh, choose other options. So. I understand. Okay, buddy, so that's actually a good you know, way to just go ahead and kick the show off here. Um, could you tell us a little bit about, obviously you're a writer, um, could you tell us growing up, was it all, did you always have the bug, or was there something that really inspired you? How, how did you get on your journey? Uh, you know, uh, started kind of uh, when I discovered comics. You know, my first comic was an uh, issue of Spider Man. I think it was Superior Foes or Deadly Foes of Spider Man number four of a four part uh, limited series, which is insane to jump into that. No idea what's going on. Well, all these people want to beat up Spider Man, but I, I dug it. Uh, you know, I came back and then discovered the X Men and discovered uh, Will Sportacio on Kenny X Men. I think it's about 281 maybe 282 somewhere around there the one with storm and bishop on the cover uh and that just got me hooked man ever since then i've been uh fascinated by comics and storytelling and you know i dreamt of being like uh one of the artists in the marvel bullpen all that kind mm -hmm. of fun stuff right on Absolutely. but yeah it's, uh you know it's always kind of had a big part of uh the kind of stories that I, I like to uh to read and enjoy so yeah so was that part of the Claremont run, that X-Men at that time? Or was that like post him? Or? Yeah, he was uh, kind of finishing up, uh, you know, uh, around then. So, right. yeah, and then it was just, you know, X-Men number one and all that kind of stuff just kind of took off. And it was X everything, man. Back in those those years, it's just anything with an X, I'd try to get it, you know. So, nice. yeah, so a, lot, a lot of fun times, a lot of great stories, fantastic art, which is, like I said, all those kind of, things i hope people can can tell them in the projects that i'm trying to pull out you know trying to have all those kind of big grandiose stories the incredible art the the nice. you know sick covers all that kind of stuff you know something to this day that i try to emulate okay wonderful um yeah definitely um the 90s obviously especially within cg is, is a massive influence um for me uh I started on Spider-Man for comics as well with um, J. Michael Straczynski's and J.R. Jr.'s. I got a um, volume one uh, paperback of that amazing Spider-Man run. And uh, it was like, I was probably 12-ish at the time. But uh, that was like, again, a big story with like big ideas. And I'd only really been familiar watching the, the cartoon shows growing up. But uh, yeah, um, huge, huge inspiration. Great, a great time in comics for sure. Uh -huh. So um, when you started writing in, in earnest, was it something you were also doing alongside your drawing throughout high school? Or was there was it after you decided art wasn't your path that you tried writing? Or? I mean, I dabbled in it, uh, you know, like I said, but it was never any kind of like real formal training. It's mostly just, you know, I had all these kind of fun ideas in my head. So I just started kind of taking notes on them. You know, I had my own kind of like uh, 
rip off superheroes. I wish I could remember what they were. I only remember one of them. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, and I would just write these little kind of side stories and stuff and draw badly <laughs> and try to like do my own little kind of like uh, flip books and stuff. Yes, yeah, so it was just, uh, you know, just the idea of the writing thing really came later, but the idea of telling stories to me, I've always liked, you know, I, I, could, I was always a very creative person who could come up with like an idea on something and just kind of run with it. Uh, so, so that, that's always been, uh, it wasn't until like, you know, I started kind of doing them uh, independently that, that I really kind of started to hone in on the actual writing process, but the storytelling and all that always kind of came natural. So it kind of sounds like um, at some point it just kind of came bursting out of you and you just figured I keep having all these ideas. Let me just write them down. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just really kind of, cause, cause I, I'm somebody who always writes notes about stuff. So I have like tons of like post-its and all, all like just crazy ideas, even if it was never going to lead to anything. I always felt like I, if I had like a cool idea, write it down and put it like in a notebook or something. Just keep it there just in case. And then yeah. a lot of that stuff actually kind of came to fruition once I kind of uh, found out about comic skating and indie comics and all that stuff. You know, it's kind of all these ideas and stuff and all this note taking and all this stuff actually kind of paid off. Because by the time, you know, I launched my first book, you know, I'd already been kind of fine tuning stuff for about like two years. So. Nice. So those ideas, right. everything all kind of came together. That is actually a really great point. Um, I'm, I have a similar sort of journey myself in a way that I started writing like with a purpose pretty much when I found CG. But up until that point, I had a bunch of ideas that, you know, I would just make notes of. I'm, I'm the same type of, you know, notebooks or just like the notes in my phone's got a bunch of ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, tons uh, of like documents <laughs> on my phone oh, yeah. just like you know the google drive all sorts of titles and stuff you're just like it's madness but yeah it's uh you know just it's good to have a place where you can funnel everything and then always come back to it and be like all right that kind of works that doesn't you can kind of trim the fat of it but it's good to have the idea because you know i don't know how everybody else's mind works but mine if i don't write it down i'm never going to remember it again <laughs> like it's, it's gone it's gone so it's good to have a backup. Yeah, but that is a, a good piece of advice. And, and speaking of something come funneling back, I, I think something's come crawling back here, Mr. Page. <laughs> hey, guys. How are you hey, doing, buddy. man? Dude, hey, I man, refuse the stream smelling like a boot again. Okay. Yeah, this is like, like you, you know, you guys are in daytime savings, and I go to the gym at four. Mm -hmm. So your six is my five. And I had to stream yesterday, like, without taking a shower and do. I couldn't stand myself. Oh, you're good, buddy. I'm I'm uh, I'm hot as a son bitch myself here. And yeah, it will be horrible. What they do. Yeah. Mm. Evan, where, so, yeah, where was... state are you in, sir? No, uh, I'm in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. that's right. nice and cool. Oh, no, that's brutal. Hot as fuck over here. <laughs> hot as fuck right now. Uh, oh, yeah. You guys are in summer. Like we yeah, don't get boy. the Panama is like hot and hot as fuck. It's, there's no like cool moment in the year. But we're, we're talking Vikings today, man. Like, I've been All right. singing the, the boat song. You know, like, my mother told me something I will buy. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, dude, like, the Vikings are the shit. Yeah. And for the record, being the brown guy in this stream, we don't need no brown Vikings, okay? It's not needed. <laughs> Stop it, Hollywood. There Sorry. Go. Straight I from a uh, brown man's mouth. Uh -huh. yourself here, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm normally a lot browner, but I haven't been out in the sun, so uh, you know, yeah, you gotta, exactly. you gotta get out more, you know. Mm -hmm. I might get, get, fill in get the sun rays hit me, and you know, you'll, you'll, see, you'll see the Puerto Rican side come out. Yeah, exactly. Like, dude, there's so many, there's so many stories that, that can be told about brown people that are awesome. Like, I was watching Pizarro's Conquest of Peru. Like, they haven't made a. Uh, a story about that because everybody thinks like oh the spanish came in and they kicked everybody's ass like dude pizarro's enterprise was like 150 people basically the inca empire was kicking everybody's ass so everybody allied themselves with the spanish to kick the inca's ass and there was like a power struggle between atahualpa and his brother to see who was going to be the king of the inca empire they took advantage of all of that like it's, it's a game of thrones level story nobody has done that because we need brown vikings you know, 
So it's dumb. Don't do it. Interesting, yeah. though. I, I'm a big history buff myself, as you know. But yeah, yeah. Nice. let me let me say hello to the chat real quick. We've yeah, let's do, let's do it. Let's do it. And Joseph mm -hmm. Dread, everybody. The hey. law. Hey, Joe. I Thank am the law. Here. Appreciate you. And uh, that's that's all so far. But we can say hello to Pops. Howdy, hey, what's Pops. up, Pops? Yeah, there he is. What's Howdy. up, Pedro? Hey. hey. Uh, nice. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and sort of segue um, into how you came into CG. With is it was it just a stumbling online? Was it you know how how how'd you find CG? And then what was the uh, sort I of discovered it through uh, through uh, Ethan. Uh, he had just launched his YouTube channel. And right. by literally, I mean, I saw like the first video, like after mm -hmm. he launched it. So yeah. like literally when he launched his first channel. Oh, and, you know, the pencil I, of scorn? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah you know, his, his little uh, shopping trips and all that kind of early yeah. stuff he did. Yeah. Back yeah. when uh, he used to have live streams and he could name everybody in the chat and just be mm -hmm. like, <laughs> there were like 12 of us or something, you know. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So I discovered it through that. You know, I'm a big uh, comic book fan, a big Green Lantern fan. I love... Uh, what Jeff and Ethan did uh, for those like early uh, comics, you know, Rebirth is one of my all-time favorite stories. And yeah, you know, I'd kind of fallen out of like love aside from like the stuff Jeff was doing, everybody else who wasn't really, I was really feeling it. And I found out about uh, Zach through him and different other kind of like comic book reviewers. So I just kind of started, you know, following them and seeing what they were saying about comics and, you know, everything they were saying made sense, you know, like it was a lot of, weird stuff going on, you know, it's a lot of agendas, a lot of just stuff popping up that really wasn't conducive to sales and, and interest in the book. So mm. that's kind of where, where I started with that. Then I joined yeah. Twitter and then, you know, it was downhill from there. So. Sure. Twitter is the jump into uh, the, the nether realm, so to speak. It's like you can kind of hang out on the fringes, but once you hop yeah. in Twitter, it's like you're in this bitch yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. You're in, you're I in. Mean, to me, Twitter is like a pool of shit. I mean, it's shit, but it's warm. Yeah, it's, it's fun with friends to sort of swim yeah. around in, but not. No, I don't know, man. Like, I, I block like 80% of what I see on Twitter. Just everything yeah, is a freaking cesspool, but that's the way to like promote yeah. your comic books, man. Because mm -hmm. Facebook is for old ladies, and Instagram is for people who don't buy books. So yeah. they love Twitter. Is so a I hit uh, the heart on pictures. That's all. It's about mm -hmm. all Instagram's good for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a not never been an Instagram guy, and I've sworn off of Facebook many years ago I mean, just you, because it was driving me insane. So I'm just you, like, I'm you have the cheekbones for for Instagram, Jen. Yeah. I just want to tell you that yeah, you could you can have a career on Instagram. Yeah. I don't know if I would necessarily like the sound of that. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could have a comic book career, but that's hopefully where it stops. I don't know. Yeah, but exactly. Do we have a, a friend yeah, here me a the show? Hey, buddy. Thanks for coming by. The brilliant star that shines through the night, the jagged rock in the boot of crime. Rise yeah. stands before you. All right. All right. All right. So, um, and very nice, Edwin. That's pretty much how I, how I came into it. I remember finding Ethan's, uh, yeah, the what comic, what pro comic artists, his first shopping mm. trip. Just that mm. of the blue, like, ooh, this is interesting. And, uh, yeah, I, I didn't start with his uh, Green Lantern, but... Um, one of the ways I actually got into Flash just like randomly back in the day was like catching, you know, top 10 Flash stories. You never read a YouTube thing. Oh. And uh, one of his, it was his and uh, Jeff's, uh, was it Flash? It wasn't Flashpoint, but it was uh, the other one that the uh, Flash uh, Rebirth. Rebirth? Yeah, yeah. Rebirth. Yeah, Flash yeah, Rebirth. Rebirth. Yeah. Yeah, that blew my freaking tits off. And, uh, yeah, dude. Turned that out to me is like right. everything so foreign because when I heard of, uh, uh, Green Lantern, like Ethan, Ethan's uh, run of it. It was it was a student in my school. Like, hey, check this out! And it's like, focus on animation. <laughs> I mean, I was full like an, an animation teacher mode, but I read it. and It was awesome. It was like, yeah, Ethan Van Skyer, cool. And like all these years now, like, hey, Ethan, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, dude, that that guy was big, even then. Yeah, and I, and I don't mean fat. But he's fat. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. So um, um, we still got about another like 15 minutes before we talk about the project, the current yeah. one. So that, that does give us a little bit of room to talk about um, the ACE, if you'd like. Oh, so yeah. Your, 
Was that your first, once you got into CG and saw the doors essentially open for anybody that walks through it, really? Um, how soon did you start making the ace? Was it immediate or thoughts about that? No, when I first uh, kind of dipped my toe in, I was just happy to meet like-minded people. You know, I just wanted to meet cool people who love comics, you know? Like I started making friends with all these artists and other creators and stuff. I met uh, Sweens who did Oddity. Me and him, he was like one of the first people that I got to know and stuff. And, you know, he, he's the one who actually helped create the ace, uh, his original look and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, initially I was just there to support creators and stuff. And, you know, uh, seeing people jumped off. And then, you know, I saw kind of like a lane open for, for stories that I, I wanted to read that I, I that didn't really have like a lane. And I just started coming up with this idea for the ace uh, and just kind of, it took like about two years before it was ready to like start announcing it and to start telling people that it was, you know, I dropped the mailing list and stuff. So it was, it was a long time, you know, just working on it, making sure that it was right. It wasn't trying to rush anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it wasn't until I felt like confident that it was good. Cause you know, I got a lot of feedback from a lot of the people that I knew like passion for drawing and stuff like that. Sim, you know, I was behind the scenes with him. We all formed like a friendship and stuff. So we all kind of saw each other's ideas and projects and stuff. So yeah, once it was ready, that's when I kind of launched it. And it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been a blast, man, just getting the idea that you could create, you know, the thing that I was like 13 years old trying to create, you know, actually came to life much later in life, but you know, it was real. Yeah. You know, it was is my book, yeah, is my but, baby. Yeah. But you know, you know what, what, I, what I say to that? Like, if you are like 16, 18 or whatever, and you make a comic book, I don't think you'll savor it as much as if you do it after you have like experiences and yeah. you know what I mean? You're yet to live. So how good can your comic be if you, you haven't had the experiences to like put them into comic book form? I yeah. think we're at the age where we should be telling stories. Yeah. Before like the elders will gather the kids around the fire. So right now we don't have a fire, but we're telling stories. So and like the uh, point of reference for everything is like, it is completely different. Like, mm -hmm. you know, compared to like that kind of young mindset, you know, I yeah, wish I had exactly. the energy. That's the one thing I wish I had is Ooh, that, that yeah, energy. Dude. I could use mm -hmm. that. But as far as like, you know, my knowledge of, of bases of where I can dip yeah, into different dude. things is so much bigger. It's not even funny. Like, yeah, that's what I tell the ladies. Back then, yeah. mm -hmm. That's what I tell the ladies. Like, dude, I have the knowledge, but I don't have the energy anymore. So yeah, just gotta... let me rest in between bouts. There you go. And I'll make you happy. No doubt. It's all, <laughs> it, no, no need to rush things. Trip, really. No, 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 no need. Yes. Okay, how about this? Let's get a little bit of. Oh, come on. There's a guy right there. That dude. That dude kills me. It's a, it's a bit of a yeah. longer laugh, but there's a guy. Right, right now, you are killing me with that. Just... I know. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, don't do that, dude. This. <laughs> This is turning into okay. something completely different. Yeah, we're having fun. Okay, so let me. Yeah, um, you are. Let, let me go ahead and pull up um, your current project, Raid of yeah. the White Leopard, on, oh, yeah. on my comic. Okay, so. Um, could you take us from the top, sir? Um, give yeah, us the, the pitch, and then we'll hit the trailer, and then we'll, we'll be off to the races. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, Raid of the White Leopard is a story of a band of Viking raiders who get caught up in a massive storm, and then they wash up on a mysterious island. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of uh, what the pitch of the book is. So this uh, is like a bloodier, I don't know, I'm getting this vibe that this is like a bloodier Jason and the Argonauts kind of thing going on here. Yeah, I've heard that those comparisons before. Actually, yeah. I never really thought of it, but yeah, a little yeah. bit. It's definitely like a mystery, it's an adventure, all these kind of yeah. fun weird is, things. Is, kind is, of put yeah, is there any like supernatural element to the story, or it's just like adventure and hacking? Oh, there's and there's some like mysticism, you know, oh, you like, would call oh, it. You know? awesome, yeah, there's, dude. there's a lot of different little elements that uh, come throughout the whole story. Kind of get a little bit more as a as each kind of issue will, will come. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. Gotta, gotta Very squeeze nice. that juice out. Let's you know? play okay, so. that trailer. Yeah, man.
Pump that volume. Three to the white leather, book one, is the story of a band of Vikings that get caught up in a storm and wash up on a mysterious island. Written by Edwin Acevedo, the writer of The Ace, with art by Avery Butterworth from The Lost Pages. Back at today on FundMyComic.com. Dude, you got the right artist for this story, man. Yeah, very, very. This is a beast, man. The Jesus. stuff that he did in this is just yeah, dude. Insane. Very detailed, very detailed. The lighting is very moody. Like you know, this is not gonna it, like it doesn't bode well for, to anyone. Like <laughs> oh, yeah. that's what the art's telling me. So, dude, awesome job finding that artist. Yeah, and and he worked on he worked with with the Diaz brothers. Yep, uh, he did. Uh, he helped do some of the uh, uh, the people. Kind of ash okay. can and stuff like that. Him and Dan Dahl, oh, they cool. kind of like tag team on those pages. But yeah, Avery's nice. a super talented guy, and just you know, like he was the perfect guy for for this story. I'm just mm. like, can't That's wait for good. people to see like everything he did on this man because the pages yeah. are, are insane. That's awesome to see, man. Like that artists are are trying are are starting to get like traction. Like yeah, the guy that worked on so so and so, like you know, like we're, we're building up history over here, so. That that's cool to see. Like we're getting this cross pollination of IPs and artists and and ideas. But it, is he using Sipitone? Like I don't know. It's kind of like the, the the JPEG is kind of small, but it looks like he's using Sipitone on it. Yeah, he a, I appreciate a lot. Yeah, he does a lot of like uh, the gray tones and all that kind of oh, fun cool. stuff uh, uh, on these. Yeah, it's like you know he's actually a very talented. Uh, colorist but to me like once he sent me the pages in the gray tones i was like this is it man like this is it says such like a, a atmosphere you know to the pages like i don't i don't want to see it colored i think it's just kind of perfect like this you know yeah no it's definitely gives it a unique um, sense to it the whole thing very heavy yeah okay so let's let's get a little more into the uh the story and the character specifically um is could you tell us about this big ginger yeah. Uh, behemoth here. Yeah, so that's Arik. He's the uh, leader of the uh, the band of Vikings. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, he's, he's you kind of see the the story through basically two points of view. In this is, is basically like you see the the Viking kind of side through Arik, and then you see kind of like everything that happens on the island through the White Leopard. So I wanted mm -hmm. to kind of set up these two kind of b distinctive kind of people and then eventually kind of you kind of see where they both come from and kind of what leads to the conflict that they have so uh but yeah uh, like i said i'll probably uh get into more of his background in uh book two but oh, yeah Eric is very uh very kind of he's, he's a i like to call him like a true believer someone who really believes like in the gods and and, and in destiny mm. and, fate and being great he wants to see in valhalla so oh, basically, wow. he's developed a trust and a respect from his crew uh, that, you know, they'll do it basically anything that he asked them without question. So, so I, I can't, I, I can't, I can't like help but notice that he's a redhead. So if you make a movie, who will play him? Like Idris Elba? Or <laughs> maybe Sam <laughs> Jackson? Know, the, the depends if I sell it to Netflix or not, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> who knows what they'll want, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, awesome. yeah, I love that, especially the cover. You know, that's by Donald. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. love, like, you know, he, the, the the just kind of big grand nature. You know, yeah, it just grabs dynamic. you. You know, oh. just, him just slicing and killing people, and just like, yeah, that's that's exactly what I want. You know, just something that leaps out. If I saw this like on a spinner rack, I'd, I'd have to take a look at this and be like, what yeah. is this? You know, so so that's why I always try to go for 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 these covers. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, beautiful colors by How Comics. Alan Alonzo. Mm. Uh, yeah, oh, so cool. just setting that, that tone for the cover. Yeah, very nice. I'm also really digging this sword here that obviously has a little sword trigger. Hilt. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it's got that, that trigger. On yeah. It, so it's like a laser sword, right? Probably. I don't know, man. Like, I'm intrigued. Is this like a uh, an anachronic tense uh, story, or is it like uh, time accurate? If you know what I mean, what I'm asking. Like, is, uh, it, is that 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 sword brings questions? You know, like, yeah. So. I mean, uh, basically, 
it takes place where you would assume a Viking story takes place. The Viking saga, the era, the the seven hundreds. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, so, right. did you do a lot of in, like looking into? Are you a history buff yourself, or could you tell us a little uh, bit about? The I mean, I've looked into a lot of the the stuff for Vikings just because I like Vikings. You know, mm-hmm. just but you know this this is like a comic book. The you know first and foremost, so the idea of kind of taking these kind of like we set up like a realistic kind of take on Vikings and then we kind of mm. introduce kind of the comic book stuff into it. So, so it right. gives it a different look, you know? So, so like, but yeah, these, these are the traditional Vikings. They have no superpowers, you know, mm. uh, you know, uh, o- Odin and Thor aren't going to, you know, tag team with them. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. And stuff. Like, you know, we're not going to get like yeah. crazy like that. But we're going to have some stuff with the islands really kind of like where everything kind of changes, mm-hmm. you know, we kind of take this kind of realistic element and then we kind of bring it over to like the comic book side. So we yeah, kinda... that, that's the thing, like what, what really helped the the, Vank, the Vikings during that era wasn't really like they were better than anybody else. Like they destroyed the Saxons, but the Saxons were warlike people, too. Like they invaded the, the British Isles before. Mm-hmm. What helped the Vikings is that their mobility because their boats could go anywhere and the, Sa- the Saxon boats couldn't. So they could go like way inward with their boats, mess everybody up and leave. When the Saxons were there, like they were already gone. So that's what helped them like basically dominate that era. But the, so that, that era, yeah, that era mystique of the of the Viking, it's it's very cool. And everybody yeah. is like in love with that. Like so yeah. it's awesome. It's a great kind of like so, setup for, for, for the story. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Greg, the, the, things, like, the uniforms of, of the guys he's killing. Are raising a lot of questions, man. It's just like they're not really Roman. They look more like a combination of Greek, but you can it's combined with a little bit of like 17th yeah. century, 18th century soldiery. So I don't know. Like that's why I feel like this story is anachronic. Is that that choice of design is very telling that these guys are not from a definite part of history. Like that, like that's the fancy element you were talking about. So. Yeah, man, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Yes. Okay. Really so we cool. got Greg. Greg in the chat. Let me say hello, so Greg. Hello, hey, buddy. Thanks for coming by. Mobility mm-hmm. is definitely one of the yeah. most important advantages. To Hell yeah. I, I learned about something today. Just sort of might relate to what you said. Um, I found this guy on YouTube who, I guess, mm-hmm. in the UK, they have uh, this channel that travels along the. I guess, what is this, the east side of the country up to the north. Uh-huh. And uh, uh-huh. if you have thinner sized boats, like what this guy has, they have some type of uh, license there where you can basically live on the water. You just have to move every two weeks. And he mm-hmm. travels this channel pretty much up and down the UK. Um, and it's like that side of it would be facing the European side, the mm-hmm. right side of that. Yeah. So, as you're talking about the Vikings zipping around there with mobility, I'm like, hmm, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that, that's how they did it, man. That's how they just hit and run, man. And like they, they had they had a, a a proclivity of hitting monasteries. Is that where the gold was? And monks are not armed, so <laughs> yeah, it was a massacre. Shaolin monks. That the Chinese yeah. learned that. Oh yeah, they they didn't attack China. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I have never heard of Vikings in China. That would be no, insane. That would be insane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, could you tell us a little bit about the main cast aside from uh, e- Eric, I believe? Um, yeah, Eric, uh, like I said, mostly uh, for this issue, we kind of introduced some of the other kind of Vikings and some of the other kind of players uh, in, in book two. The, the first book is just about kind of setting the tone and setting the two main mm-hmm. players, which is yeah. Eric. Uh, you kind of get to see some of him. Most of the dialogue involves him. Uh, you kind of like you know, kind of see everything through him. And then the second part, when we get to the island, we introduce you to the white leopard. And then we mm-hmm. kind of, you kind of start seeing the story through his eyes. And then kind of, uh, yeah, it's kind of like those two are like the main stars in, in this first kind of book. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. It's so ominous, man. I, yeah. I'm loving the art. Here we go. Here's the white leopard, right? Ah. Yeah. That's him. Cool. Nice. Whoa. So, when you're as a writer, when you're writing things out, I mean, this is a hell of a page. Dude. Could you, could you describe, yeah. like, in the script, how this page, how, how you had this page wrote out, or did did, you, did the artist just 
take it and go wild? I mean, obviously you did. But- yeah, it's mostly like just setting up like, you know, the idea of the white leopard and his soldiers, uh, you know, kind of uh, launching an attack on, on these pirates. So it's just basically like a just like a basic outline of like what this page needs to be. And then he basically he can format it however he likes. You know, he can break it down into uh, panels or he could just kind of go wild and do a splash for it. You know, some of the other pages were more detailed. They're panel by panel, each description, you know, but but sometimes you just kind of I like to let my artists like, like surprise me, you know, so I just kind of give them like a couple of basic notes and especially like, you know, this is like uh, 10 pages in and stuff. So I'd already seen what Avery had done. So I'm just mm. all right now, just let him loose here. You know, mm. see what he yeah. does with it, you know, he kind of yeah. built that trust and then you, you just let the let the guys do what they do. So. Absolutely. Great. So who, who's the letterer on here? Because there's actually some really great sound effects. As well. this yeah. uh, the letter is uh, SK. He, uh, hmm. He's lettered uh, Blood Bone and the Ace Volume 2 for me. Uh, so he's done a great job. Uh, he, Very nice. Absolutely. He definitely adds the little touches to each panel and stuff to kind of make it flow. Uh, so I've been having a great time working with him and you know hope to do some more in the future. So. Beautiful. Okay, great. Looks looks fantastic, bro. Um, the character design. So when you did, when you were creating each character individually, was it? Did you give a, a large description, or you know, when you got the stuff back, was there a lot of back and forth on the editing, or could you tell us about that? Uh, I just mostly give them notes. Like uh, each character had like a description, especially for the Vikings. Uh, even though like I don't go into like heavy detail about them, like I said in the first issue. Uh, you know, he, he already had like basically like sketches of each one and kind of what they represented and who they were. Uh, so each one got, got like its own kind of breakdown. Uh, like uh, Alga, uh, who's the, the lone female, she had like a, a whole description about what, what she is and, and who she is and what she looks like and stuff. Some of the other kind of players. Like I said, they'll get more kind of like a meteor role in uh, book two. I just kind of wanted to focus on Arik and the White Leopard. I wanted mm-hmm. to focus on that dynamic, and then you can kind of like expand and touch on like the other kind of players after. Very nice. I mean, so I got cool. a question, but let me say hello to the chat because I see yeah. I see somebody oh, here, Mr. Oh, yeah. Hold up. Here we go. Chris. Stop hey, sugar. Chris. Thanks for coming by, buddy. We won't talk any shit this week. We talked a little bit of shit last week, didn't we? We'll Pedro? try not to. Okay, we'll try not to. No, I'm just kidding. You know, just kidding. Hey. So, what's good, Red? Okay. What's good, Red? So, Edwin, um, you pretty much growing up in comics as a X Men, you know, a big fan of the X Men in team books. Did you find yourself relying on any of that, you know, experience in a way when you were uh, writing a team sort of centric book here? I know it's got the main character, but yeah. obviously you had to play on some interpersonal dynamics and things. Yeah, uh, for this, uh, there's a lot of actual inspiration. For, for the Ace, there's a lot of, like, X-Men kind of touches on it. Uh, just a lot of, like, the cover, some of the color schemes, just different little touches. Like, if you've read kind of like the, the 90s X-Men, uh, uh, you'll kind of notice little hints and, and homages to it. For this, actually, our big inspiration was uh, 13th Warrior. Uh, you know, it's absolutely one of my all-time favorite movies. Uh, the idea of, of, like... Banderas meeting these these Vikings and them kind of mm. them fucking like a brotherhood, even though that the story's not like that. But but I just love the tone of that story, and you know the violence, the the kind of brotherhood, the idea of uh, characters finding out about each other's culture, all that kind of interesting stuff. Yeah, so that's probably like one of like the bigger kind of influences on it. Nice. I've never heard of the movie Thirteenth Warrior, nineteen ninety nine. Vikings yeah, meet. Fantastic, yeah. Oh, Antonio Banderas. Okay, shit. Right on, man. Yeah, nineties movies. I think, um, you know, well, a lot of people seem to revel in nineties culture. Me included. I was born in ninety two, but I mean, I just, I think nineties horror is like pretty much it, it all kind of reset in the two thousands with like gritty reboots of things, and it really changed the tone of how they started making horror movies. But I feel like the nineties was a peak of the decades prior just really honing in on fun crazy shit in the 90s okay. so. yeah highly highly recommend it anybody the great thing about it uh it's not three hours you can watch it in like less than two so 
you know, it's a very easy watch. You can just pop it in and it'll grab you. I like it. All righty. So we got, uh, I, I know the artist, but it's also because I know the boobs. Just boob the end. <laughs> the one and only. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's a great thing to have a signature. This is his, these are his calling cards, really. Yes. Yeah, I see two of them. <laughs> yeah, it's unmistakable. Boop Dan. Alrighty, so, um, let's see, Pedro, you got some questions, buddy? What are you, what are you thinking? Dude, I'm I'm thinking this book looks awesome, and uh, yeah, man, like I, I'm I really like the mood. It's not really a question. I'm just uh, just I'm commenting on the fact that I really like what they're doing with the lighting here. Because it's just like ominous. Like it, I know this is not a horror film, uh, a horror like comic book. But dude, like I'm I'm feeling like nobody's gonna survive. <laughs> I don't know. Like that. That's what I'm getting. Definitely gonna be a lot of bloodshed. Uh, in the, yeah. In the church, so, you know, it's not gonna be uh no pretty. There's there's no nobody safe. I'll, I'll say that. You know. Exactly. Nobody exactly. And, 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 and it looks it looks it show, it's showing that in the art. So dude, excellent job, man. Excellent job. What you're, what you're doing with the negative space, the silhouettes, the shadows, it's just, dude, awesome, dude. Is, was that was that something that was deliberate, or was that like a happy accident? Oh, a lot of that's just Avery putting his uh, his touches on it. You know, he loves a lot of, like, the silhouettes. He loves a lot mm -hmm. of, like, especially playing with the, the panels. And, the, and like I said, after a while, you know, after I'd seen, like, what he did on the pages, I just kind of let him loose. Mm -hmm. Like, I was okay. just like, you know, I just like to trust his, like, his vision for it, you know, because yeah, the pages like, just got better and better. It's one of those things yeah. where I just kept getting them, and we were just like, man, yeah. this thing is just, like, Yeah, like for example, like, 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 you have that, that lower uh, left panel where they're, where, they're, where they're, like, toasting. You have the, the, the proper, like, silhouette against the sky guy, saying scroll. Mm -hmm. But behind the guy, you, you, you have people who are backlit. Yeah. So you can, like, define the shape, but they're still in the silhouette. So it's like a silhouette within a silhouette. Very clever, man. Those are things that, like, now that I've seen it, I'm going to use that. That's awesome, man. It's really, really cool. Great job. And also, like, uh, the idea of, like, this scene is, like, there's supposed to be a lot more Vikings that in the mm -hmm. boat that, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that don't survive. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, he focuses always. on the ones that you see are like basically the ones that do survive for like right, the first cool. issue. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, a little touch that, that he did. I thought it was great. Oh, Shadowhawk, hey. what up, man? Hey, yeah, what's up, Shadow? uh, say hello to the chat real quick. We got Shadowhawk. Hey, buddy. Thanks for coming by. How do you know our words? I listen. Listen. Yeah, yeah, fantastic scene, man. Just, yeah. Yes, I cannot put it over enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Put that on the list. Booba. Yeah. Booba. Well, we got we got Hen. Just call me Hen. Just the call her Hen, everybody. Don't you? Yeah. What's up, Hen? Else. Yeah. Howdy, Hen. Thanks for coming by. Appreciate you. Okay, so Edwin, um, let me ask you. This is an ongoing series, right? Yeah. Uh, this is going to be a limited series. Uh, it's okay. actually uh, it's meant to be three books. I see it almost like a like a three part like HBO miniseries. Oh, you know, awesome. The beginning, the middle, the end, and then we kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, kind of close it up there. So the, the idea is basically the first one's mostly like introducing you to the, like the, the, the character, some like the story, the setup. Second issue is mostly kind of you see the, where the conflict kind of starts. And then the third one's kind of like the resolution. So it's kind of like a, a three play act. And, you know, that's kind of what we're going for in this one. Absolutely. Can't, can't beat it. A solid mm -hmm. structure that's was that like when you had the initial idea did you have the ending of the story right away some some writers that'll like sort of spark the whole idea how, how what was the like the initial creation no the initial idea was this actually started as a short story that i pitched to alterna uh, last year uh so basically it was just like a little short seven page story about uh vikings who wash up on a strange island and that was kind of it you know, like one of my dreams as a creator was to get published by a comic book company. And, uh, you know, thankfully I'll turn those around, you know, to, to like support independent creators. And, you know, uh, like I said, I pitched the story to, to Peter. He loved it and we kind of made it happen. And then he, uh, he printed the, the first couple pages on, uh, it came out on a Wednesday, number 18. 
and it was wow. awesome seeing my name in the credits there with a Kenneth Rocker full cover and all that kind mm. of fun stuff. So I could kind of check those off my bucket list. And then, wow. you know, I got some really good feedback for the story. And that's kind of like I started to kind of play with, all right, what happens after like the little twist at the end? What do we do now? So I spent basically the last couple months honing in on what were the what the grand story was. You know, who who is the white leopard? Because you know the, the story is called Ray of the White Leopard. Uh, so you kind of who is the white leopard? You know, w what happens on the island? You know, where the, where's the conflict? Where's this? Where's that? And I just kind of started uh, writing a, a big kind of outline, and then breaking it down into to issues because I knew it was going to be three parts. So then I just kind of honed in on like that first issue and then sent to uh to avery he dug it and then we just kind of got to work wonderful awesome. and uh, all, all the artwork's work is done on this uh, i just sent the proof so uh it's, it's good everything looks tight from the Beautiful. printers and we're good dude awesome very nice so you, oh, all right the proof kick ass so is it right after this if there's 30 days left on the campaign right yeah it's, and it's a hard 30 like there will be no extensions it, it ends uh, cause I plan on doing more projects, uh, later in the year. So I wanted to kind of just clear this out. Uh, so yeah, it's going to end in 30 days and, uh, you know, you won't get another shot at this, especially that cover and kind of this version of it, uh, you know, nice. unless I, until I do book two. So, right. Okay. Let's, let's say hello to the chat real quick. I see a, a friendly gator. With Mr. Oh, good good stuff. stuff. What up? Hey buddy. Yo, Edwin, he says, sup. Thank you for coming by. Good stuff. Appreciate you, buddy. So, okay. I, I imagine once the third project or the third book comes out, you'll be collecting this in a, uh, a floppy volume? or oh, I, I want, like, a big, nice hardcover, man. Oh. <laughs> so, this is another one of my, like, dreams. I want, like, a nice sign I could slam down. <laughs> and just, you know, nice. you're going to be like, this is this is the thing. Because uh, Ace is, like, an ongoing. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be collecting, uh, you know, I'll be collecting, like, you know, that in like soft cover volumes, you know, every four or five or whatever, uh, you know, so that's an ongoing. <laughs> so, nice. yeah, but the, for, for like this, I, I would like to have this as a collection and like, I can see this like on my bookcase, nice little hardcover, it would be really dope to do, so. Awesome, yeah, and, and actually I think it's Mixum or Mixum or Comics Wellspring, one of the two, I know Mixum's mm -hmm. got a really bad rep, but I, I used yeah. them to print a book and didn't have an issue, but. I know it can sort of be, you're up to the mercy there, but one of them is offering hardcovers as like an actually affordable option. Um, so that's actually just been a recent-ish update that's been good for creators, I think. I, I want hardcovers of my stuff one day too. That's, that's a dream yeah. of mine. Just something really sexy is the word I've been throwing around. It's got to be sexy. Okay, buddy. So, um, we got a couple other things you've got going on. You do have a YouTube channel. Let me drop that in the chat. Um, could you tell us about um, the other stuff you've got going? You've got a uh, an Etsy store, I believe, or was it, was it one, another yeah, type of uh, store? Yeah, just set up uh, an Etsy store a couple months ago. Uh, I had some extra copies of the Blood Bone Ash Can that I did. So I've been kind of selling them there. I think I think got like only eight copies left of that. I only printed like a limited amount. So if anybody wants them, that's the place to get them. Uh, Blood Bone Ash Can is, is so much fun. It's it's beautiful, just looking like the, it's got a great uh, foil cover, uh, amazing art. Donald killed killed the the art inside the book. Uh, it's just like a fun kind of uh, story of this kind of like vigilante powerhouse who's trying to clean up his city. And you know, I'm gonna be doing like a full number one of that sometime next year with Joe Ball. So oh, cool. uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Wow, it's gonna be killer and just pure action over the top, just bloody. Yeah, dude, just, just getting murders, man. Joe Ball. Yeah, it's, you know, me and Joe have been talking about doing something for a while, uh, yeah. and our schedules finally like freed up, and he, he he was down to do it. So I was very happy and uh, very nice, yeah. man. Congrats, man. I'm gonna yeah. bring up your Etsy store real quick. I just wanna do what? share that out. Okay, and then we'll get back to before we leave. I want to hit the perks for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do. We didn't hit the perks. Yeah, let's let's take. So this is Bloodbound. Very freaking mm -hmm. nice. Load up properly. This is the one thing I don't like about Streamyard. You gotta. It doesn't uh, re load. What's happening? I'm trying to share the actual uh, 
oh, comic. Okay. So, yeah. On the screen. All right. He says he's real quick. Good stuff. Up, good intergalactic. Stuff. <laughs> oh, and dude, Indica, I'm getting my brownie Indica. batch tomorrow. So it's going to be interesting. Animanian, Animanian weeds. It got a little sprinkle of that Colombian white in it, buddy. No, dude. That, that, we, we, I, we, we have a, a place called El Valle, which is very temperate. And this lady is growing something called lavender kush, and uh, it's nice. And they're making pastries out of it, so you get truffles and brownies. And I'm getting brownies tomorrow. Beautiful, nice. <laughs> sounds like a good oh, yeah. time. Yeah, yeah well, it's like a great time. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So this is bloodbond, dude. This is there. You go. Beautiful. You gotta get a truck. Pringles. Look at them potato chips. Pringles. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, dude, is love that full cover. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, dude, awesome. So sick it is. It it came out absolutely fantastic. I was mm -hmm. so happy with it when I got it in my hand. I was like, this is yeah. But, dude. Then you know, Donald just killed the uh the art inside, just very mm -hmm. over the top, just kind of you know well how he does it. So yeah, yeah, yeah like Donald, really Donald has a very like like nineties animated animation style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of like what like, like what they did in Spawn and what they did in the Max. Like I I see that better in his artwork. Definitely, yeah. So very like his not very like like catchy shadows, very blocky, but in the right place. So yeah, dude, this is Donald's another beast, man. So very cool, nice. look at that. Yeah, awesome stuff. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean this this especially. Getting a legit art team, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. Joe Ball, right? Ah, oh, damn! Congrats, buddy. That's freaking awesome. Okay, so yeah, let's you. let's hop back on over to the raid. Yeah. yeah. We want to talk some perks. Yeah, let's talk them perks. All right, cool. So um, we will start at the top here. We've got. For twelve dollars, the digital copy. Very nice. There you go. Would you like to walk us through it, Evan? The rest of it? Uh, yeah. So uh, obviously, uh, you know, digital PDF will be sent. Uh, probably it's looking like November for for like fulfillment. So probably early November. Everybody who backed that will get uh, an email for uh, right. the file, so uh, be able to enjoy that. Uh, then you got the uh, book, which is uh, fifteen dollars. And, uh, you know, to, uh, I think five shipping in the U.S., uh, 15 okay. international there. So very, it's a very solid price. pretty affordable for, for, you know, especially uh, shipping is going up all across the board. So it's not easy to get these books out to people. So Yeah, $5 is a very fair price. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, uh, a lot of people wonder where we did like a Canada shipping. Uh, we, I always had a backer who was having trouble with his information. So we just created like a Canada only basically tier for him. And he was able to kind of back the book and kind of work out the little hitch there. So that's why that's there. But you, you can, you know, if you're Canadian, you can choose the regular option. It does ship worldwide. Uh, so we'll, we'll get it out to you where, wherever you're at, you know. Uh, like I said, I have, do have three fulfilled campaigns, uh, Ace 1, Ace 2, and Bloodbone. They've been shipped out. Everybody's gotten their books. So you don't have to worry about this, uh, you know. Right on. Get to, Solid track record. There you go. Can't, yeah. can't argue with that. Yeah, then you got so, the, uh, the the two book tier there at 25. Nice. Yeah, so, you know, you can, if you're, especially if you're international, that's like a great option. You you and a friend can kind of split the cost of it. Uh, you get a bit of a discount uh, on it too. Or you just want, you know, two copies to have one to read, one to like save, all that. You can do that too. So, mm -hmm. okay. And then already sold out. Very nice. There you go. Had a bunch of uh, sketch card bundles. Basically, we offered a sketch card and uh, the book. Uh, we had guys like Shelby Robertson, Joe Ball, uh, Brandon Diaz. We we have some that haven't sold out. Like there, you see Michael Beacon did one. Uh, there's a couple more that that are still available for anybody who's uh, who's interested. Yeah. A lot of talented. Uh, yeah, Passion has another one there. That colored one is beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, did a great job with that. And then Eric Nielotowski did a couple. Uh, so nice. I just got those in. So I just put those up. Sick. 
Right on. And here we got something. Like, oh, an original page. Original nice. art pages. I think there's uh, four left. So uh, all the Viking pages were the ones that I had. So they're they're, they're really that. sold out. Nice. And so we got like four left there. So anybody wants nice. it, really affordable. Uh, Avery yeah. is just like a beast. Too. So much detail. So much just like good stuff on these. So if anybody's a fan uh, of the book or Avery or just likes dope Viking art, uh, you can go uh, snatch one up. Something really satisfying about physical art in in your hands when it's got for me because I like heavy shadows, but like that big backdrop right there, that big silhouette. Just seeing all that black on a page contrast mm -hmm. to the rest of everything is like really yeah. satisfying. Yeah, very nice. Okay, awesome. So, is um, going forward, are you strictly on um, on my comic? Or are you doing IGG as well, or are you? Yeah, I plan on doing every kind of crowdfunding that'll have me uh, eventually. Yeah. You know, uh, like I said, I'm trying to figure out where Ace uh, Three. It probably looks like it'll go on Indiegogo just because the first two launched there. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, I'll be trying out each and every crowdfunding site. You know, I think it's just about kind of getting out there, getting my name and my projects in front of as many people as possible, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're Kickstarterers here. You know, I know that's, you know, whatever, but okay. Very nice. All righty. So is there anything else we'd like to add before uh, getting ready to, to wrap it up here? we got a couple minutes. I've got your stuff in the uh, chat here. We'll... Mm -hmm. Check out Edwin's uh, YouTube show, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just uh, stay tuned. You know, if you're following me on Twitter, that's kind of the best place to get all the announcements for anything that I do. But I, I think I'm going to be putting up some more, one more uh, tier for the next, like, uh, you know, month that's coming up this last month. So I'll stay tuned for that. I'm just waiting to... Uh, to get the art in before I announce it, but probably next two, three days, I should uh, have another tier and some more, maybe some more sketch cards. I do have a couple more that I'm waiting on. So uh, yeah, you right. might see a couple more things pop up on the, uh, if you missed out, you're gonna, you know, you can grab, grab them. Very nice. Okay, great. Awesome. And uh, let me share this in the chat one more again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All righty, very nice. Okay, so. All righty. Well, Edwin, we're we'll going to go ahead and wrap her up here. We're coming up on an hour. We can keep the show at a tight hour for everybody's sanity, of course. Yeah. But um, thank you so much for joining us, man, and, and giving us yeah, the time dude. today. And, yeah, dude. I'm not that trying to be honest, man. Yeah, dude, the book looks awesome, man. Like, it's, I'm, I'm stung, stunned. Stone. Yeah, I'm just, I stone. I'm stunned. I almost say I'm stoned. I'm just thinking about the brownies, man. Sorry. <laughs> I'm stunned. By the art, so good. I'm gonna be stoned hot. tomorrow. But yeah, I think uh, I think people are really gonna love it. If you see, that's mm. the proof right there. Ooh, Ooh, look at that! Full screen. Yeah. Oh, oh my mm. word! Uh, dude. Been too many spoilers, but you know. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. look at that shiny! Nice uh, wow, dude! It's mostly oh, because of the uh, light that's on in front mm. of me. You know, yeah. but you know, it's yeah, still that's that's good. <laughs> That's happened yeah. with the spoilery element of it. Just yeah. get that sheen on it. So people yeah. can't really see it. But, dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah, dude, that's incredible. Okay, congrats on having the project complete already and just waiting yeah. to. Yeah, that's, that's just. Uh, yeah, Ready to go to print. Yeah. Yeah. So how soon after this closes are you launching your next project? Or is there, are you doing a pre-launch for it? Can you, can you give us a little? Uh, I'm thinking of doing uh, Ace 3 in September. Uh, nothing's kind of locked in yet. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, being colored right now. So uh, I got to kind of weigh. You know, I want to have as much of it done as possible, which is kind of cool. one of the things, you know, when I'm in campaign mode, I, you know, it's just I want to just focus on the book. I don't want to have to be tracking down people to finish. So I try to get as much of it down. So I might just postpone it, you know, depending and maybe do a second chance for blood bone. You know, I've kind of been, I think a lot of people kind of slept on it when I first launched it. So maybe use fun, my comic to, to like do like a, a new cover Hell for yeah. it and just kind of relaunch the ash can. I think it'd be dope. Cause like I said, I think the, the, the number one with me and Joe is going to be sick. And I think I want as many people to kind of be caught up as possible. So that's an option. And so, yeah, you know, maybe doing like another 
uh, Ace One and Two, a uh, second chance also, you know, from non fun my comics. There's, there's different options that I'm, I'm looking at right now. But, yeah, in the next couple of months, like I said, stay tuned to my uh, Twitter account. And I'll kind of, like, break down the news for, for everybody officially. But, yeah, I'm planning on having some more campaigns in the next probably, like, six to eight months. You'll you'll be seeing a lot of me on different platforms and stuff. So. Right on. Well, you're always welcome back here, buddy. And if yeah. you do, do blood you. phone, definitely come back so we can yeah. talk that. And, yeah, uh, doors are always open, man. Yeah. So, all right, buddy. We're going to go ahead and bump you to the back, and uh, we'll end the show. You're free to stay. You're free to free to go. Um, I'll just go ahead and thank you again for joining us. Yeah, man. Thank you. And, uh, you, guys, you guys rock, man. I appreciate it. All right, That's you, awesome, man. You made my day with a, with a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah all right. I'm going to be sufferable you. now. All right. You, that is you on a good day. Anyway, yeah. All right. So, now, uh, thanks again to Edwin for coming by and our fantastic chat. Lots of friendly faces. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, man. Thanks for coming yeah. by. Shadowhawk, appreciate you, buddy. Hey, dude, everybody hey. is is complimenting my brownies, man. It's going to be yeah. nice. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Sure. Neo sure. Star, Stefan. I'll be lettering his project here. Keep your yeah, dude. eyes peeled for that. Riser Man. Oh, Riser Man or Riser Man? It's Riser Man. Riser right? Man. Riser yeah, Man. Okay. The, the, the pebble in the boot of evil, my friend. Of evil. That's right. Dude, like, I want to animate that character. I don't know. Like, just call her Hen. Hen, thank yeah. you for coming by. Yeah, sir. Let's make that happen. Oh, Animated sure. trailer for Riser Man. Oh, Talk, oh, to shit. Me. Talk to me. Okay. Red Dress. Chris, thanks for coming hey. by, buddy. And uh, I believe Judge Dredd. God damn, I forget Judge Dredd on my mm. front door. Yep. Thanks for coming by, Joseph. Appreciate you, man. And uh, everybody else whom I believe I said hello to and goodbye. Yeah, dude. And, uh, okay, everyone. So let me see who we got next week. Mm. Uh, oh, actually, hold on. hold on. Let me check. Uh, is next week 4th of July? I think next week 4th of July. Yeah, next week is 4th of July. Let me check the good old calendar here. We're off next 4th week? of July. Yeah, it's yeah. 4th of July. Yeah, we're off 4th of July. I don't July. know. Obviously, Independence Day. I'm gonna be. It depends. Hot it depends on you. We, we yeah. don't celebrate um, the American Independence Day in Panama. So well, to me, it's just Tuesday. So it's okay. up to you. Well, I have uh, already not booked somebody for that show, so okay. I'll probably be having that one off unless somebody <laughs> desperately needs my time on the Fourth of July. I will. Yeah, I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, the, November third, uh, though. Which is like the Panamanian Independence Day. Like, not even I care. So, <laughs> November 3rd is on a Tuesday. I'll do a show. Because I'm uh, not committed, James. All right. I will keep that in mind. And maybe we will just do a show on that day to force you to celebrate Panamanian Independence. So, there backfire. you go. There you go. But no, uh, <laughs> the following week, we come back with Joe Catapano racing into studio to talk Star yeah. Circuit number two. It's awesome. And uh, that'll be fun. Star Circuit's mm -hmm. one of my most favorite projects in mm -hmm, CG. Mm -hmm. And then the following week, uh, another friend returning, Dion Dionysus from the Tome of Reckoning, a there fellow Floridian, a very nice yeah. guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Greg says, I can't afford to celebrate Independence Day because of all of the economic slavery and all. Yeah, well, that, right? that, will dampen, that will dampen the celebration, and, yes. And it's a bummer. Yeah. It's a bummer. I mean, there is a really bad time for fireworks and barbecue. Though. Oh, dude, speaking about barbecue, I just made porqueta on Sunday, dude. That's like you, you grab a pork belly and you roll it like a cigarette, and then you make it on indirect fire, and then you like make little like holes on the skin so it will like bleed out and make like this nice chicharron surrounding it. Oh, it was awesome. Is it crunchy on the outside? It's, it's crunchy on the outside. It's crunchy on the outside. And inside, it, you, you marry it with fennel seed. Uh, it was fennel seed. Thyme, oregano, lemon peel, orange peel, salt and pepper. Beautiful. Dude, it was awesome. Delish. Sounds delish, my friend. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, gang, we'll go ahead and let you go since uh, mm -hmm. I'm prone to keeping the show going. Rain, you know, that you are. That out. you do. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll skip that this week and we will see you all in a week and a half or two weeks on the Ginger Pedro Show. Take Peace. care, everybody.